Hey everyone. In this video, I want to go over composite SLAs. Now this is my V2. I did a video on this a little while ago, but since then, how I've talked about this, feedback I've had as I've had this discussion with customers and sometimes confusion, I've modified how I talk about it. So I wanted to update and do a new video so you have that latest explanation. So when we think about a composite SLA, remember an SLA, a service level agreement, is just a number, a percentage, that this service will be available. That when I make some request, I will get something happening. I will get a positive response happen. So if a composite SLA is what is that overall SLA when I combine the component SLAs of all the parts that make up that service. Now, depending on how I need each of those component parts to be available for the overall service to function, well, that impacts that overall SLA. Do I need them all available? Or do I need just one of them available? Or will I need this combination? And that's what we'll see as part of architectures. When we try and drive to higher SLAs, it's all about having options and resilient alternate paths. And it's really important to think about, hey, if there's a certain probability of something being there or happening, well then there's also a probability of it not being there or not happening. If I flip a coin, well, there's a 50% chance of it being heads and a 50% chance of it not being heads. And I'll actually start with that idea so I can have a coin. So we have our coin. And I could say, hey, I want heads. There's a smiley, bald person. It's literally me. So I could say, well, the chance of it being heads is a 50% SLA. It's a 50% chance I'm going to get that. Because it's one in two. So the one in two chance or 50%. But likewise, I could say the chance of it being not heads, well, it's also one in two. It's the other side. So the chance of it not being, in this case of a coin, is very simplistic. Hey, it's 50%. Now, you can imagine a more useful service. Let's say it was a, uh, for example, 99% chance of it being there, well then the chance of it not being there would be 1%. And it's important to really think about those various things happening and both the chance of it being there, it meeting it, and the chance of it not being there and not meeting that requirement. So that's just one flip of a coin. If I just flip the coin once, hey, it's a 50% chance I get what I want. But it gets more interesting if we start to flip the coin multiple times, I can really think, or oh, if I flip it twice, if I flip it three times, and then what is it the need I have? Is it I need them all to be heads? Or I just need it to be heads once out of those three, for example. So let's think about this. Let's think about, okay, the first time I flip the coin, well, that first time it could be heads or it could be tails. And it's a 50% chance. So I have a 50% chance of it being heads in that first time. So now I flip it a second time. And once again, it's gonna be a 50% chance of it being heads previous interactions, previous times, other services have no impact on this one. So once again, hey, it could be heads. But I could also think about, well, it could be tails. And likewise, if it was tails last time, well, it could be heads or it could be tails. And I do it a third time. So my third time is exactly the same, remember. Hey, 50% chance of it being heads. So once again, hey, I could get heads here, um, 
or it could be tails. It could be heads, could be tails. Could be heads, tails, heads, tails. So we get those different scenarios that could happen as part of it. And it really does boil down to, so out of those three possible flips of the coin, I get all these different combinations. And if I, I fill out the table just so it's more complete, so obviously these are all where it was heads. Just so as we track it through, maybe it gets easier to see all of them. So there's different combinations. There's eight different combinations based on, hey, those two possibilities of this happening. So what are my requirements? If I could think about all of these different combinations, so again, we have eight possible. If my requirement is that I need one or more, that's all I need. So if I need one or more, well, so if it's one or more, what are the chances of it not having a single heads in any of those flips? So it's this, it's only this one. So here I could see it's a one in eight. One out of eight of no heads. Which means therefore, it's seven out of eight chance of one or more heads. And I can see that, that's very logical. Hey, yep, yeah, all of the others, there's at least one H in all of those other rows. So if I just need it, one of the things out of all of the options, then it's, well, what is the probability of none of them being there? None of the things I want. So it's that, hey, the probability of none of them. If it's, I just, if I need all heads, well then it's what's the probability of all of them being that value? And here I can see, well there's only one chance of that happening. So this is one out of eight of all. So it's a lot lower probability, which makes complete sense. If you think about it very logically, if you actually flipped a coin, if you were to say, hey, you got to flip the coin three times and they all have to be heads, well, the more times I have to flip the coin, the less likely that's gonna happen. We can try it out. Oh, we've got heads. Okay, heads, tails, heads. So it's unlikely they would all be heads. But if I said, hey, flip a coin three times, I just want you to get heads at least once, I would feel pretty confident of that. And then the more times I flip the coin, the more components, the bigger the chance I'm not gonna get head every time if I have to keep doing it. Whereas if I just have to get heads once, then the more times I do it, the better my probability becomes. So that's really the key point when I think about, hey, I've got some probability of something happening. If I just need it to happen, one of the things, the more things I have as options, the greater my probability becomes. The more things I need for it to work, the less my overall probability becomes. So with coins, it's fairly easy to see. If it was a pack of cards, there's clubs, diamonds, spades, hearts. Hey, draw a card, you've got a one in four chance of it being a club. The more times you draw a card, the greater the chance eventually you'll get a club. But if you had to get a club every time you drew the card, it gets less and less likely. So we can see, hey, those probabilities, it makes a lot of sense. So with a coin one in two options, it's very easy to understand. What's the actual math that makes that happen? Because when we talk about SLAs, well, we need to understand the math because, hey, just trying to do one in two, that's not gonna work very well. So remember, it was all about a percentage. So I, I can think about, when, what is a percentage? So when we think about a percent, 
It's just something out of 100. That's all it is. So if I say something is 99%, well, that's 0.99. If something's 50%, well, it's 50 out of 100, then it's 0.5. So when we talk about percentages, realize hey, it's just something out of 100. And that's going to be important when we do the math. So if we now take our coin scenario. So remember, we flip a coin three times. And there's two different scenarios we're going to care about. I want all heads every time I flip the coin, or I want at least heads once out of the three flips of the coin. So I flip the coin, hey, heads, heads, heads. Remember, each of those possible flips of the coin was 50%, or dot five. I'll say dot 50 for completeness. Likewise, so this is all about the chance of it happening. Likewise, I can also flip the coin three times again. And this time I'm focused on, I just need it once. Now remember the chance of it not happening with a coin is the 100 minus the 50%. So it's 50% again. So it's still, the chance of it not being heads each time is dot 50. So then we get down to what is our requirement? If the requirement is I need all of them to be heads every time I flip the coin, then it's about the chance of this happening and this happening and this happening. So it's a probability of those SLAs all happening. So when I care about all of them happening, well then it's dot 50 times dot 50 times dot 50. So the chance of this dot 50 times dot 50 times top 50 is dot 1, 2, 5, which is the same as 12 and a half percent. Do it over 100. 12.5. So that's one in eight, which actually matches what we saw. The chance of all heads, hey, it was one out of eight. Now I want to know what's the chance of none of them being heads, because I just need heads once. So what's the chance of not being heads out of all three of them? So that's the chance of it not happening. So once again, I'm going to times the not probabilities. Now we just did the math. We know the chance of it not happening is dot one, two, five, which means the chance of it happening, i.e. I am going to get at least heads once, is one minus the chance of it not happening, which is very logical, which gives us this nice, hey, dot eight seven five or eighty seven dot five percent which again hey that's seven out of eight which again ties in with what we saw seven out of eight we're going to get at least one heads in all of those things so we can see that's the math i mean that's really all there is to it it's either if I need all of the components to be there for this thing to work, then it's what's the chance of it being there, of it being there, of it being there. It happens, happens, happens. So I times its availability. If I just need one of the things, well then what's the chance of all of the options not being available? So the chance of this not happening and this not happening and this not happening, it's gonna get lower and lower. So the chance of it not happening is, well, 0.125. So the chance of at least one of them happening, of at least one of them being there, is one minus that probability of none of them being there. So I get a nicer, an increased chance, which is what we saw. Hey, I flipped the coin. Hey, we got heads twice. So we actually, that, that kind of fits. We 
know we were going to get at least one of them, it's very, very probable. Well, we don't know, it's still probability, but we see that happening. So that's the idea with a coin, and it matches those results we saw. How would that work with actual components of a solution? And what we'll see is it's no different. The math doesn't change. It's always this idea of if I need multiple things for this overall service to work, well, it's the and of their availability. If I have a choice between them, then it's, hey, what are the chances that both of them are not available, which gets very, very unlikely. So let's switch out the idea of coins and these 50%. If we had an SLA of 50% in computers, we would never ever touch that thing. So let's think about something more real. When computers, we like to talk about the idea of nines. So we might say, hey, three nines, which is 99.9%, .9%, which remember in our math is therefore 0.999. Or hey, it's four nines. So that's 99.99%, which is 0.9999. And remember, when you think of those things, what would it therefore be not available? So if it's three nines, the chance of it not being there is 0 0.001. Of this not being there is 0 0.0001, which is important to think about, hey, whatever that SLA is of it being available, it's one minus that for it not being available. So we can think about these are the nots in those SLAs. So okay, let's forget about coins and let's put in something a bit more realistic. So let's think about, okay, I've got a load balancer and I've got a web server and I've got a database. And let's say the load balancer is four nines. So we'll say it's 0.99, no, no, didn't mean to do that one. I was thinking percent, 0.9999. Let's say the web is three nines, 0.999, and the database is four nines. And for my service to work, all of those things have to be there. So what does that mean for us? Well, we know what that means to, to be there is, well, I have to times those numbers. So it's this times this, times that is our ultimate overall probability that they will all be available. And if I do that math, it comes out to 0.9988. So it's 99.88% would be my overall SLA of this block of service. So this instance, is a 99.88% SLA. So the more components I have to have, remember the more chances I need heads in that coin flip, the less chance it's gonna happen. Now, it's very improbable, they won't happen, be there, but again, the more things I want, it does start to decrease that SLA. And we can see that in the calculator. So. If we quickly just flip over to the calculator, we can do exactly that math problem. So if it was 0.9999 times 0.999 times 0.9999, there's that 99.88%. We, we see that exact number there. And if you don't trust the 0.99 stuff, the reason I'm using this maths calculator is I can actually say, well, 99.99 percent times 99.9 percent times 99.99 percent. And if I say, hey, solve this for me, please. Anyway, it's basically telling me, is that it's over here. I don't know why it's now not doing the nice little solve thing, but it's giving me that same answer, the 99.88. So we can see that math is, is working right there. Okay, 
So that's when I need all of them available. How can I improve my SLA then? Well, remember, so we want an OR in here. So one easy way I could do this is I'll copy it. I'll have another instance of this complete thing. So I'll take this complete solution and I'll put a copy somewhere else. So I've got another exactly the same over here. And they have exactly the same individual SLA components, which means the overall SLA of this instance will be exactly the same as this one. 99.88, exactly the same SLA. But now I can use either one of them. I just need one of them to be there. And so what changes is my relationship becomes or. I need one of them. So now what do we care about? What we care about is the chance of it not being there. So the chance of this not being here, well, it's 0.12%, which is 0 0.0012. Same for this one. It's exactly the same. So the chance of it not being there is 0 0.0012. Remember, it's 0.12% out of 100. So we divide by 100, it becomes 0 0.0012. So now it's, what is the chance of something that's 0 0.0012 times something that's not 0 0.0012. Well, that's really unlikely. 0 0.0012 times 0 0.0012. If we go back to our little calculator, and we just type that in. So 0 0.0012 times 0 0.0012 is, well, it's, it's pretty unlikely. 0 0.0000144. Okay, so if we take that and if we say, well, okay, what's, what is one, oh, one minus that 0.9999985. So that's, that's a pretty big availability. So now I can go back and I can say, okay, so the or, the overall solution, if I have an alternation, I can have either one of these things has to be there. This SLA, the combined, is actually 99.9998. We'll stop there. So we can see it got a lot better. Individually, they're 99.88. But if I just need one of them to be there, well, now it's the chance of, well, what's the chance of both of them being unavailable? That becomes a, a tiny, tiny probability. So fantastic. But now we might say, well, okay, I've got these bits, but really what I have to have as well is, well, I have to have some global load balancer, which has four nines. So this is also 99.99. So remember, 0.9999. That has to be there. And I need one of these. Well, their combined SLA is that. So that's that 0.999998. So it's there, that 99.99 times. And then that would be my composite SLA of my whole solution. And if we went back to our calculator, so we have our number here. So that was the chance of both of those individual solutions being unavailable. And now let's add in the chance of our global load balancer. And now we can see it's, okay, 99.9. 989. That's our new overall solution as part of that. So if I do solve, there you go. Three nines. I mean, really, it's almost a cheat. So basically four nines, but 0.99989. 
I feel pretty good about that. So our overall when we do this becomes, okay, 99.989%. Because this was basically one. So it's gonna only be slightly worse than the worst component when I have that and relationship. And that's it. I mean, that's the math. It just continues on as there were other components. If, hey, I needed something else here, well, then it would be this times whatever this other one was. Maybe it's Azure AD. Well, Azure AD is 0.9999. It's four nines as well. So it would be 0.99989 times 0.9999, et cetera, et cetera. If I had alternate options, well, then it becomes, hey, what's the chance of it not being there and this thing not being there? So that's composite SLAs. Really, the, the whole point of it is we're really focused on if I need all of them to be there, it's all about the probability of this happening and this happening and this happening. If I just need one of the things to be there, then it's about what is the chance of this not happening and not happening and not happening, which gets less and less likely the more options I have. And then we just bring them together to work out our overall composite SLAs. And that's it. It's just, hey, chances of things happening, if I need all of them, if it's an option between them, what are the chances of none of them happening, uh, which is none of them being available? And the chance of then, therefore, one of them being available is one minus that number. And that's really just how we think about it. It's that one minus the chance of it not being there. So when we talked about, hey, this not happening, 0 0.0012, 0 0.0012, we multiplied those, it was then one minus the result of those. And that, that was really the key point. So I hope that was useful. I hope that cleared up and made a lot of sense. Um, until the next video, take care.